Hi, my name is Bill Nelson. I am the Grand Canyon Council Advancement Chair, and this will be a presentation on the Unit Eagle Scout Advisor or Mentor and what they need to know to get their job done. The term advisor or mentor for this unit level position is used interchangeably. And you will hear us use either advisor or mentor for this position. Many of you are familiar with the mission and aims of the Boy Scouts of America. You've read them in our literature and you may have heard about them in training sessions. The importance of the mission has not only to do with the making of ethical and moral choices, but that this should be done over one's lifetime. We're looking for long-term improvement here, life lessons. The Eagle Scout Service Project experience is one of these. What the Scout gets out of the project and takes with them through their life is a great deal more important than the project itself. You've probably heard about the aims of scouting too. If not, jot them down. And as we go through this presentation, think about how the various parts of the service project apply to the aims. At the end, we will close the loop on that and see how you did. The Eagle Advisor starts the engagement at the Life Order Review, and your service should then continue through completion of the Eagle Board Review. Just as units work on a day-to-day -day basis in the rest of the advancement program, so should units provide the day-to-day -day mentoring to help scouts through the service project process. To be a qualified Eagle Advisor, you need to be registered in any adult position in scouting and you need to be current in youth protection training, which is now mandatory to be registered. And you need to be approved by the unit leader. Now the unit leader for a troop is the scoutmaster. The unit leader for a crew is the crew advisor. And the unit leader for a ship is the skipper. What do you need to know to be an Eagle advisor? Well, you need to know the current rank requirements. So get the latest version of the Scouts BSA handbook and review the rank requirements leading up to Eagle. You need to know what is the national policy surrounding the Eagle Scout process. Well, you can find all policies and procedures in the Guide to Advancement, which is available at scouting.org. In that pamphlet, there are different chapters. And in section two, it talks about how advancement works in Scouts BSA. In section eight, it talks about boards of review and the Eagle Scout Board Review would be part of that chapter. And in section nine, it talks about the Eagle Scout rank. So you should be familiar with those three sections of the Guide to Advancement. On the Grand Canyon Council website, we do have an Eagle Scout page. So you should go to the Eagle Scout page that is there and, re and become familiar with the Eagle Scout process. And we will talk more about that. And you should know how the process flows in your district. When you go to the Eagle Scout process page at the council website, make sure the very first thing you do is download and read this Read Me First file. It'll explain the process. It's not very long. It's only two or three pages long, but we try to anticipate any issues that you might run into and address. we address them in the uh, Read Me First file. So read that. Uh, the other thing to, to understand is that all of the paperwork is going to go into a portal. So if you look at the very last step, you'll see there's an Eagle paperwork portal. So at the very end, when the scout has finished the, the Eagle project, all their paperwork, uh, application, workbook, 
uh, pictures, everything will end up in a web portal, uh, at a in a folder in a web portal. And so what we would like you to uh, kind of stress with the scout is please try to fill out these forms online. They are PDF files for the most part, and the scout can go into the uh, the PDF file, open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader, and fill in uh, the workbook, fill in the application, make changes, and that sort of thing uh, by typing. And we really would like the forms typed, uh, ty the, the scout type in the forms, at all, if at all possible. Uh, if they try to print them out and then write them you know, fill in the forms with a pencil and then take a picture on their phone and upload the picture, it becomes very difficult to read what, they're, what they've written. So we really would like to encourage, we can't mandate it, but we really would like to encourage them to fill out all of these forms, packets, workbooks, and everything uh, online in Adobe Acrobat Reader, uh, and just type in to the to the different forms. So what is your role as advisor? Well, we already already said that you're kind of the, the expert. Um, very often you're the key to success. Uh, scouts need to be motivated. Scouts need to be reminded. Uh, scouts need to know that, hey, they need to start the process as soon as they become a life scout. Uh, they should be getting their project done uh, in their freshman year of high school, if not sooner, uh, because high school gets very busy after that. Uh, they, these, are, these are things you know about uh, because you've experienced it. You've experienced the scouts going through these processes. So you're going to be the person who's going to remind them. You're going to be the person who will kind of help them through the whole process. So it is true, you are going to be a key to success for the scout. Uh, you serve as advisor, consultant, mentor, nag. Uh, you, you are the, the person watching over that scout's advancement. Uh, you want to encourage the candidate to complete the requirements, like I said, you know, kind of nagging. You're also a resource for the, for the scout. You're the person that they're going to go to to find out what, uh, what they need to do and what's out there and what, how, where are the forms and all that. Uh, hopefully you can give them some project ideas um, and refer them to people to contact. Uh, and if you can't, you can go to your district and they can give you ideas to pass along to the scout. Uh, you also explain to the parents uh, that the candidate has to complete the requirements, not them. Don't get into the situation where at the end, the Board of Review looks at the scout and says, did you really do this, this project or did your parents do it? And the scout tells them, well, really my parents did it. And the, he fails his Board of Review. This is not like, this is the same as any other Boy Scout rank. The boy has to do the requirements. Nobody else. It's not Cub Scouts. It's Boy Scouts. So he has to do the, the project. He has to manage the project, not his parents. And that's true for all of the requirements. He has to be the one doing it. Um, sometimes people, parents, others that are concerned are so concerned about him getting to Eagle that they're willing to jump in and do it for him. And it's just not the way require. You know, advancement works in Boy Scouts. And you're a positive adult in his life. Uh, you're going to be the one helping him through. You're going to be the one using logic and common sense to help him overcome obstacles and uh, hopefully reach a successful outcome and become an Eagle Scout. Here are some guidelines for adv advisors. First off, you adhere to the Eagle Scout advancement process as described in the Guide to Advancement Chapter 9. Chapter 9 of the Guide to Advancement contains the BSA official process and policies 
for the Eagle Scout Award. So you should be, as subject matter expert, very familiar with Chapter 9 of the Guide to Advancement. An advisor's role is to support the scout and to guide them through making the kinds of decisions that will help them meet the Eagle requirements. Advisors do not have the authority to dictate changes, withdraw approval previously granted by the district or council, or make any other directive action. Instead, Eagle Scout advisors strive for a positive experience by encouraging scouts to make wise decisions and follow logical processes as they work through the requirement. In this way, we assist the scout to become successful, not just with their project, but we provide an experience that will help them throughout their life. Right at the get-go. Also, there is a Life to Eagle process uh, presentation. It's a YouTube presentation similar to this one, uh, and it's geared towards the scout and the parents. So. Uh, and any unit leader that wants to just know what the process is. Uh, you're going to be the expert on this whole thing, but uh, this gives them an overview of the process and uh, should answer the scouts' questions and the, and the parents' questions. It would be good to have the scout uh, view that video um, and the parents view the video and any unit leader that's in your unit that's interested in this whole Life to Eagle process view the video. An advisor should be designated for every scout as they pass their life board of review. And then soon after, you get together with the scout and start working with them on planning their project. Uh, again, what you're doing is motivating them, giving them suggestions. It's up to the scout to actually plan what they're going to do for a project and to contact the beneficiaries and that sort of thing. An advisor's work with the scout can be through face-to-face -face meetings, telephone calls, email, or by video conferencing. But face-to-face -face is preferred. Regardless the method of contact, discussions with the scout should be relaxed, respectful, helpful, friendly, courteous, and kind. Well, you get the picture. Again, you're not in charge of making sure that he or she does the project. It's their responsibility to do a project. You're there as a counselor and mentor. At the first meeting with the scout, go over their uh, advancement history and what they still need to get done to finish uh, Eagle. Uh, talk about project ideas. Uh, remind the scout that it takes usually about six months from the time they think of an idea to the time they finish the project so that they should give themselves plenty of time to get the project done. Go through the required merit badges for Eagle and find out what still needs to be done. And remember that some of those badges take three months to complete. Talk about position of responsibility. Position of responsibility uh, between Life and Eagle is for six months. Make sure that they, uh, the scout is in a position of responsibility and is active. Uh, talk about what staying active in your unit means. It usually means uh, you know, being registered, attending meetings, that sort of thing. And then go over the Life to Eagle process with the scout so they understand what it is. And we're going to talk about the process next. So let's go through the Eagle process flow. So at this point, the scout should have passed their life board of review. Now, they have probably been working badges since they joined scouting. Um, so there's just a reminder here that they need to complete 13 required Eagle badges and they need to complete eight optional merit badges and they can have started work on those at any time. So after they pass their life board review, 
use the workbook and get the project approved. So they, they figure out what the project is they want to do. They use the workbook. We'll talk a little bit more about the workbook. Uh, write up the proposal for the project and get that approved by the unit and the district. Once the work once the project has been approved by district, then the scout can start working on it. They can't really work on it until it's approved by district. It can't get approved by district until it's approved by the unit and the beneficiary. Uh, but once it's approved by the district, then they can start using the workbook to help plan and execute the project. And then at the end, once the project's done on the project side, they write up the project uh, in there's a report section in the workbook. They use that and then they get it signed off by the beneficiary. While they're doing their project, they also should be serving for six months as a unit in a position of responsibility. They also at that point can ask for recommendation letters. They don't have to wait until the very last minute to do that. There is a thing, one of the six steps uh, is to fill out a statement of ambitions and life purposes, uh, your life purpose. That is uh, actually a template that they can download and fill it out. It takes all of five minutes to fill out, um, so they should get that ready. Uh, and then they need a Scoutmaster conference once they have all the merit badges and they have all their positions of responsibility and they've been in the unit for six months uh, and they're all ready for their Eagle Board of Review. They get a Scoutmaster conference uh, and all together for their Eagle Board of Review. Uh, in the paperwork side, uh, the unit should provide an internet advancement or scout book, uh, advancement report, uh, scout history report, and present that uh, with everything else. Now, at the very beginning, right after their life board review, it's probably a good time for the scout to obtain a one inch binder and start putting all of this paperwork that they're going to accumulate into that binder. And it keeps it neat and all in one place. We call that an Eagle packet, but there's really no packet involved. It's just this binder with all this paperwork in it. After they've got everything done, there is a checklist that is on the six steps. Just go through that checklist and that helps you make sure that all the paperwork is done. And then uh, they fill out the Eagle application. You can actually now download the Eagle application from Scoutbook or Internet Advancement partially filled in, has the merit badges filled in and that sort of thing. And then you fit, they finish filling the rest of it in, making any corrections that are on it, putting the reference uh, information on there and uh, print that out. And it's signed by the uh, unit leader, which is the scoutmaster and the committee chair of the unit. Uh, and then it's ready to get presented to the uh, all this stuff gets presented to a district uh, verifier is the, is the title they use and that person then makes sure all the paperwork's in order scouts registered all that kind of stuff and then uh, you're ready for a board of review and the district will assign uh, will get will invite the scout to a board of review and after the board of review the paperwork goes to council and national and they become an Eagle Scout. So that's the process, uh, life to Eagle process, kind of in a nutshell. We're going to talk about a little bit more stuff now. These are the 13 required badges for Eagle. Uh, notice that on some of the badges, uh, there is an or. So environmental science or sustainability. So either one of those would count for Eagle. Uh, emergency preparedness or life-saving, cycling or hiking or swimming. So it's in that category, they would, the, the scout would have to have done one of these badges. Uh, that's what the or means. So there are 13 total. 
if they do happen to do one of the both of the ors like emergency preparedness or life saving they did both of those then one would be counted as eagle and the other one would be counted as one of the eight optional merit badges so there's 21 total 13 required and eight optional The scout needs to serve for six months with the unit in a position of responsibility. Now, serving actively means that they're doing something uh, that, that the unit leader re uh, requires them to do and it's been communicated to them what that is in that position of responsibility. Uh, as an advisor, all you need to do is make sure that they and their unit uh, leader the scoutmaster are talking about this position of responsibility and they are actively uh, serving in that position of responsibility for six months note that the positions of responsibility are different for troops crews and ships this is just a reminder not to put off the project uh, the project should probably get started as soon as possible after they are a life scout they should start uh, planning the pro what planning what they want to do and then getting it approved they can't really do detailed planning and any work on the project until it is approved by the district that's part of the requirement it has to be approved um, and it's not just approved by the unit, it has to be approved by the district before they can start work on it. Uh, but the sooner, the better. This is Eagle Scout Requirement 5. It is the same as you would see in the Scouts BSA Handbook. As with every rank requirement, questions are often answered by reading and understanding the rank requirement. So we're going to talk more about the requirement, but that's where we go. We always go to the requirement for answers. Now in the requirement, it says that the scout must use Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook as part of doing the requirement, uh, doing the project. So where do they find the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook? Well, it is uh, available at the council website in the Eagle Scout process. One of those six steps is the, uh, the link to the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook. They must download that uh, to their hard disk and open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, they really can't do anything with it online. Uh, if they try, it's going to get messed up and they're going to have to redo all the work. So they, they must download it to their hard disk and they must open it in Adobe Acrobat Reader and then use that as their um, template for their documentation of their project. The first part of the Eagle Scout service project workbook uh, are instructions. It is my recommendation that you read the instructions and the scout read the instructions and the parent read the instructions. They're only like three or four pages long. Uh, they'll be redundant to some extent on other things that you've read, but it definitely gives them um, information about what is expected of them and uh, what their rights are as an Eagle candidate. So they, they should read the instructions. 90% um, of the issues with Eagle Scout projects can be avoided if they read that read me first file and they read the instructions in the workbook. This will show you where you can find the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook um, on the six steps of the Eagle process. Don't uh, just click through as if you know what you're doing to download it because it really, you need, when you click on it, there are instructions. You need to read the instructions because it, it really walks the person through downloading the document 
to their hard drive and then opening it in Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is the only way to open this document. The service uh, project workbook has a number of sections to it. And I'll, I'll just go through them really quickly here. Uh, the very first thing you're gonna see are instructions. I mentioned that before. Um, make sure that they read the instructions and you read the instructions out at the beginning of the workbook. Then the next major section is a proposal and a approval section for the, pro the proposal. Uh, included with that is a fundraising application. The proposal section uh, is the only section that needs to be filled out by the scout to get the project approved. Nothing else needs to be uh, generated to get the project approved other than that proposal section. We don't want the scout spending a lot of time uh, doing planning of a project that may never get approved. So the proposal section is all we really require uh, for getting the project approved. We'll talk about fundraising a little bit. Um, there is a project plan section, which is optional. It is for the scout use only. Nobody approves the project plan section and it can actually be left blank. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then execution uh, of the project, uh, there is a execution report, a final report of the project uh, that is in a section uh, called a project, uh, a report section, project report section. Uh, that's the final section in the uh, service project workbook. We're going to start talking about paperwork that you need to get your project approved, your project uh, report finalized, and your EGLE application, and information that the EGLE Board of Review needs. All that information is available on the Council EGLE Scout page, and we'll be talking about that and we're asking you to download or fill it out and then download it. Uh, eventually, all of the paperwork at the final stage, when your project is finished, all the paperwork will have to go up into a web portal, which is located on the Council Eagle Scout page. As you work on your on the paperwork, make sure you print a hard copy of everything that you do, and keep everything in a one-inch binder. Start now, go get your binder and start assembling uh, the paperwork uh, as, you, as you progress and stick everything in here. That way you don't lose it, it doesn't get dirty, uh, and it's all in one place. There is a guide for project advisors and where you wanna go is underneath the videos there's a section called Eagle Project Ideas. And then there's a line that says, note for Eagle Project 
approvers, unit leaders, and boards of review. That's kind of your guide that explains um, a lot of the ins and outs of what we're looking for when we approve a project. So uh, I would suggest that you, as the Eagle advisor, that you go ahead and, and look at that guide and get an idea of what districts look at to approve a project. Uh, so what kind of a project uh, works and what doesn't work? So looking again at the requirement, it says to plan, develop, and give leadership to others in a service project helpful to the community. Well, the community, as far as the Boy Scouts of America is concerned, uh, local community is, is actually, the community is everywhere in the, in the world. So it's pretty much unlimited. He can do a project to benefit a village in Uganda if he wants to. Uh, so it doesn't have to be local in his community. It do, though do, it has to be nonprofit. It's got to be for a non not for profit organization, uh, such as the United Way, Habitat for Humanity, the U.S. Forest Service, government agencies work, any church works, uh, communities um, can you know like the a parks district or something like that works. It even can be for a park that's owned by a company. Let's say a company owns a building and they have a public park in the front of their building that's open to the public and it has some park benches there that need to be refurbished. That can be a valid Eagle project as long as the, uh, the, the money and the effort is going towards that public space. Uh, that would work, even though the company may be a for-profit company. Um, originality. That, this is something that comes up all the time. Um, a project uh, can be anything uh, that the scout dreams up. doesn't have to be something can that we know about. Um, but it can be something that somebody else has done. It doesn't have to be original. If somebody else did a a, uh, a bridge over a trail as an Eagle project, another scout can do another bridge over a different trail as an Eagle project. It, so it doesn't have to be original. Um, it doesn't have to be lasting. Uh, collections are okay. Uh, it does have to satisfy leadership and things like that, but it doesn't have to, uh, it doesn't have to be a lasting Thing. So uh, the sky is pretty much the limit of what is the project as long as, uh, you know, as far as original. All right, uh, let's, let's look at uh, finding a project and what kind of a project works and who has responsibility for planning and things like that. So uh, if the scout is responsible for planning and, direct and directing uh, the project. It's not the parent's responsibility to plan or direct the project and it's not your responsibility to plan or direct the project. Uh, if you start seeing a parent jumping in there and trying to get the project done because the scout has taken so long to get it working or for any other reason, um, jump in there and, and let the parent know that if the parent does the project. If the parent ends up directing and planning the project, then the scout is not going to get credit for the project. Right? He's taking the parent is taking the adva that advancement requirement away from the scout, and the scout's not going to get eagle. Uh, the scout's the one that needs to do the requirement, not the parent. Now, keep in mind there are no minimum hours for a project, uh, and no one can tell the scout that there's minimum hours and no one can hint to the scout that there were minimum hours. Um, and no one can say, well, you know, in our district we have 300 uh, average hours per project. Isn't that interesting? Well, the scout's going to take that and interpret it as 300 hours is the minimum number of hours and I have to have a project that has 300 hours. That's not the intent of the requirement. The intent of the requirement is that the scout show leadership and do, does a project for his community. 
Um, if he does that, then he's going to get the hours. He's going to get the hours when he because of planning. He's going to get the hours because resources are going to be needed that he's directing that are going to use the hours. So he's going to get the hours. So don't focus on hours. Focus on leadership and planning. Uh, routine labor is not normally appropriate for a project and uh, I'll give you an example of routine labor would be pulling weeds at a school football field. So pulling weeds is uh, something that the school does all the time. They hire out for someone to come in and pull weeds. It's routine labor. Um, so that would not be appropriate for uh, a project. Let's say a scout um, mows lawns, uh, his neighbor's lawns, and he does that every week. And then all of a sudden now he's going to say, well, I want a project that I'm going to mow lawns of my neighbors because they really need mowing. Uh, well, that's routine labor. It wouldn't be appropriate for an Eagle Scout project. Now, keep in mind that what is routine labor for one scout may not be for another scout. Uh, if you live on a ranch, putting fixing fencing uh, is very often routine labor. You guys, they go out and on a routine basis, they go out and they fix fencing on the ranch. Um, for a scout to go out and fix fencing on for the U.S. Forest Service. Um, it may be a routine job for someone who's lived on a ranch, but it's definitely not a routine job for a city kid. He's probably never fixed a fence in his life. So uh, for him, it would be a good project. How, to, how am I going to figure out how to fix a fence in this Forest Service grounds or Bureau of Land Management grounds? So he's going to have to do some planning. He's going to have to figure it out. He's going to solve a problem. Uh, and that makes a good e for a good Eagle project. Um, we talked about uh, what's on this slide which has to do with uh, uh, community uh, uh, being, being a not-for-profit and a for-profit and a for-profit owning something outside. Uh, one of the other things on the slide though is that uh, only one Eagle Scout candidate can get credit for a project. So. Uh, it's, and there's no such thing as brothers working on a project and it's the same project and they both get credit for it. So it's just like it's one Eagle Scout uh, gets credit for the project. One manager at a time. Uh, now the projects can't be performed for the Boy Scouts of America, the councils, districts, the troop, or the properties uh, that the BSA owns. So you can't do a project for Geronimo uh, or the Herd Scout Parable although both of those places need a lot of work. Uh, it's got to be uh, for somebody, somebody outside of scouting. Uh, now the project can be for the chartering organization as long as it's not directly helping the troop. So uh, fixing up uh, painting rooms at a church would, would count as a project uh, normally. A project can't be a fundraiser. You can't just collect money for a beneficiary. It's got to be something else. Uh, we are not fundraisers and collecting money and just giving the money to, to the organization is not considered an evil project. Um, now there are some uh, fundraising uh, requirements. Fundraising uh, may be needed for the for a project, we would rather that, that the scout never doesn't fundraise at all, uh, and that he just get donations of, of materials, and there's no fundraising involved at all. But if there is fundraising that's involved to buy food or to feed the people that are working or to buy materials, uh, there are notes in your notes for Eagle project approvers, unit leaders, and boards of review that I pointed to. There is a whole section there on fundraising, and it would be good to read it and try to understand. There is a fundraising application that's in the workbook, in the uh, service project workbook. 
Uh, that is required if the scout is going to earn $500 uh, or more, uh, and that money comes from anybody who is not related to the scout, not related to the unit, not in the unit, or related in, in the unit family, and not uh, the beneficiary. If it's coming from outside that sphere, uh, and it's $500 or more than a fundraising application, which is in the service project workbook, needs to be filled out. Now, it needs to be approved by the district project approver. Uh, and if it's over $500 from one source, from one person, $500 in cash from one person, then it has to also be approved by the council. Uh, here are some examples of projects setting up a community study center for children who need a place to do homework or preparing plans for building a footbridge on a trail in a national forest, um, maybe establishing children's libraries. Uh, there was a, uh, there is a guide uh, with points of contact for uh, the uh, ideas for Eagle projects, uh, and it's on our Eagle page. So something to look at. Uh. Okay, so the the scout finds a project uh, and finds a beneficiary uh, for the project, and then they uh, agree. The scout and the beneficiary agree on what the scout's going to do, and then it. it the scout writes it up in the project proposal section of the service project workbook. Uh, and they, he, has, he or she has the beneficiary sign the proposal section, uh, saying that they agree that this is the, the work that they would like to have the, the uh, scout do. And then the unit committee uh, has somebody in the unit committee sign it for the unit, and the scoutmaster signs it. After those three people have signed it, then it goes to the district, and the district's always the last to sign it. There is a district project, Eagle Project approver. Uh, if you don't know who that is, contact your district advancement chairman. They'll be able to tell you who it is. And they have to approve the project before any work is done, including detailed planning of the project. So, um, once they have approved it, then the scout can start work on the project. Okay, so what is it that we are looking for at the district level for approving a project? Well, every project has to pass these five tests. The first one is the project provides sufficient opportunity to meet the requirements. Well, what requirements are we talking about? We're talking about requirement number five on the Eagle Scout requirements. So what we're looking for is, is there an opportunity for planning and developing the project, for giving leadership to others? And the project will be helpful those are all part of the requirement. The next test is the project appears to be feasible. Then safety issues will be addressed. In the proposal section, there needs to be some discussion about safety issues and that detail ad addressing of those safety issues will be done in the project planning phase. Uh, he does, the scout does not have to address all of the safety issues in detail at this point, but they need to allude to them and say that they will be addressed in detail in the, pl in the planning stage. Uh, also, that action steps for further detail planning are included. And there's actually a section in the uh, proposal uh, section in the workbook to talk about well, what kind of further planning steps are you going to do? It's kind of plan the plan. And then five, the scout is on the right track for a reasonable chance for a positive experience. 
Again, I would refer you to the notes for Eagle Project approvers, unit leaders, and boards of review for a detailed discussion of this part. These are the signatures you need for your project proposal. There is a separate uh, pro project proposal signature page that's available on the council website that you can download and uh, hand out for electronic signatures uh, to make life a little bit easier. The uh, people that need to sign your proposal are the representative of the religious institution, school, or community that you're doing the project for. In other words, your beneficiary. Your scoutmaster or crew advisor or sea scout skipper needs to sign it. The Someone from the unit committee needs to sign it for the committee. And then finally, you need to go to the district and get the signature of the district project approver. They are always the last person. And until you get their signatures, you cannot start your project. Now, while the scout is putting all of this together, make sure that the scout is keeping track of time. Uh, their, their hours, the, uh, your hours, anybody they're talking to and planning the project or getting ideas for the project, all of that time counts. Uh, they should think of themselves as being on the clock for all of these hours and they need to make sure that all their time is tracked and all of anybody else's time is tracked. And, and right at the beginning is when they should start tracking time because at the end it takes a lot of remembering to get all the time in there and very often they will miss hours uh, because they haven't been keeping track. Okay so the project is now approved and now we want to start work on the project. So the scout's really good you know anxious to start working on the project. Uh, they probably have never really sat down and planned a project before. So it's probably a good idea to get together with the project Eagle Project coach, uh, if one is available at your district, and, uh, and you, and sit down and look at that project plan section of the workbook and plan out the project. That project plan section of the workbook is there purely as a template to try to help a scout plan out a project. Um, it's really something meant for the scout and the beneficiary to look at uh, that this is how the plan, this is the plan, this is how the project is going to uh, come to flourishing. These are kind of the stages that the project will have. Uh, it is not required, that section is not required. Uh, and again, as I mentioned before, at the final review, it could be blank and it would be fine. Um, but it is something to help a, the teenager get organized so that they can do a good project. The project report uh, is the final section of the, of the workbook and when the project's done, when the execution of the project is done, is usually when the final report is, is put together. So he meets with you, he meets with the project coach uh, for some coaching on how to put together that final report and then he uh, he fills out the boxes that are there in the workbook. Now, I'd like to say something about changes made during the project. Uh, if there are substantial changes that are going to be made uh, for the project, they really need to be addressed at, before the changes are made. For example, and let me give you an example of a substantial change. Let's say the project was to do some trail work and, and fix a trail in South Mountain Park, and they decide partway through, the ranger says, hey, you know, instead of doing this trail work, what I'd like you to do is put a, a, a little garden in front of my, uh, my ranger shack at South Mountain. Well, that's a substantial change. The project just changed. The scope went wild. You know, it's, a, it's a brand new project. Something like that needs to be reviewed by the person who approved the proposal at the district level. So when changes like that are made or 
Uh, there's a substantial reduction in effort of the project. Uh, those sort of changes need to be re reviewed and cleared by the person who did the project approval at district originally. So you need to go back and then get something in writing, either an email or a letter or a note or something from that person that says, yes, we, we realize the changes were made in the proposal and they have been approved by the district. So that, that can be put in the uh, Eagle packet and submitted with all the rest of the paperwork. Uh, the, the final report of the project has a number of different sections and they're pretty intuitive. Um, they, uh, they're good to look at by the way, be at the very beginning, that's why I tell the scouts to read the, the workbook from cover to cover because the final report is what the Board of Review is going to look at to judge whether or not your, the project was done um, appropriately. This is uh, the section of the workbook where they would want to see after photos. Um, and any other documentation that kind of came with the project. If the photos, uh, some people have difficulty trying to put the photos in the workbook where the workbook says, you know, insert your photos here. Just taking, take the photos and, and put them in the Eagle packet so that the Board of Review has photos. Photos really help, uh, before and after photos and during, uh, photos taken during the project itself. Uh, that's a good thing for the parents to do. You know, hand a camera to the parents and say, hey, take, take pictures before and after and during the project, and it gets the parents out of the hair of the scout so the scout can lead the project. So the scout signs uh, and dates the, uh, the project, uh, like we've said before, the final plan, and, and then the scout master signs it, the beneficiary signs it, and that indicates that the project is complete. So the project uh, workbook should be kept with the Eagle packet until the rest of the merit badges are done. And when the rest of the merit badges are done, that's uh, the t and this position of responsibility is done. Um, when all of that is done, that's the time to to finish up the paperwork. At this time, it's good to review with the scout uh, all the rest of the stuff that needs to get into the packet uh, and upload it into the portal. Uh, there is a checklist uh, that is available on the list of items. I would download that and use it. It will help you make sure everything is filled out correctly. Uh, the scout should get the Eagle Scout replication. We recommend that they download it or, or a unit leader download it from Scoutbook. It will, Scoutbook automatically fills in the blanks for 90% of the Eagle application. And it may, Scoutbook makes sure that the dates are correct uh, and there's not going to be any issues later on with conflicts of dates. So we recommend that you download the Eagle Scout application from Scoutbook rather than from the Eagle Scout webpage, council webpage. However, if for some reason you can't download it from Scoutbook, you can download a blank form from the Eagle Scout uh, council webpage. Uh, any changes to the Eagle Scout application uh, you can make uh, right there on the application. Uh, if you open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader and type type in the changes, uh, even if you download it from Scoutbook, uh, it's editable. You can you can make changes to it. The uh, workbook has a final page in the workbook that needs to be signed for the final report. That needs to be signed by the Scoutmaster, the Scout, and the beneficiary. We would recommend you download the uh, final page. We have a separate copy of the final page up on the website. Download that, uh, electronically sign the, uh, that last page, 
and have everybody electronically sign it and that way it can upload you easily upload it to the portal uh, without having to scan stuffing stuff in or make uh, pictures on a phone uh, the statement of ambitions and life purpose and a listing of positions that template is uh, on the website it's pretty self-explanatory uh, the scout downloads it uh, fills it in and uploads it to the portal the uh, reference letters uh, there's a form for reference letters to go out uh, that the way the reference letters work now is that the scout sends the reference letters to the individual references and on the reference letter form the scout puts in their name and their member ID so it's important that the scout fills in their name and their member ID in each on each reference letter form that they send out then the person who receives the form fills out the reference and uploads it to the portal and there's a link on the form they use to upload it to the portal the scout doesn't get involved with reference letters after they send them initially send them out the scouts BSA history report from scout book or internet advancement should be downloaded from the system and uploaded to the um, to the portal it also helps you uh, make sure that the uh, eagle application is filled out correctly because it's going to give you all the dates of all the merit badges and the ranks and things like that uh, at this point it's also good for you to discuss the eagle board of review process with the scout uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that later and make sure you show the scout where the portal is After you click on the portal button, you will be sent to this page. And on this page, there's a list of, of the things uh, to upload to the, the portal. So as a reminder, everything that you have done, you wanna upload to the portal. So everything that would end up in the binder, you also wanna have up in the electronic portal. So that includes your service project workbook. It includes your rank application. Uh, make sure it's the application is signed by your committee chair and your scoutmaster. And you, you have to sign it as well. And uh, then make sure that your statement of ambitions, life purpose, and leadership positions uh, that template has been filled out and that's uploaded. Uh, make sure all your pictures are uploaded. Make sure your BSA history report from Scoutbook or Internet Advancement is uploaded uh, if you printed that out. Uh, again, you can go to one of your leaders uh, and ask them to print out the Scout's BSA history report from Scoutbook or Internet Advancement for you. Uh, make sure your fundraising application, uh, if you used one, is uploaded. And make sure your reference letters uh, were sent out, uh, you sent the reference letters out. You do not have to collect those reference letters. Uh, once you send them out, the, uh, the person who receives them is given a link that they can use to upload the reference letters themselves. Further down on the page is the form you actually use to upload the files. So uh, you need to have your member ID for this. So make sure that you have your member ID uh, and you can get it from your Scoutmaster. Uh, you would put in the, the Scout's name. If, if somebody other than the Scout is uploading or even if the Scout's uploading, put in your name. And then put in uh, an email address. This email address is not retained by the system, but it does send you an acknowledgement via email that the files were uploaded. So it's kind of good for your record. So you put in your email address. And then you click on this middle button with the up arrow on it, and that will allow you to browse your, your device for the files that you need to have, uh, need to upload at the time. 
and so you you can select the files that you need to upload and then you click on send files and that sends those files to the system so you keep doing that you can do it over time uh, you don't have to do everything at the end but uh, remember that you need to upload everything once you are done and only once you are done click on the second button that says I'm ready for final review. That notifies council to review all the documents that are up there and start the final process for your Eagle Board review. Don't press that button prematurely because it's just going to waste the time at council. So don't do it until you have everything up there that you are satisfied that you have everything up there and you're ready to go and apply for your Eagle Scout rank and schedule a border review. So when you're at that point, go ahead and click on the I'm ready for the final review button, and that notifies council that you're ready uh, for your, uh, for all the documents to be reviewed and uh, for your final border review. If any issues come up, uh, during the review process, uh, you will be notified, and you will also be notified of when uh, your board review will be scheduled. We'll talk about that next. Let's talk a minute about reference letters. The, there is a form on the council website for reference letters. Uh, the scout downloads that form, puts their name on the form and their member ID. As a, uh, member IDs can be obtained from the unit roster. So the committee chair or the scoutmaster can get member IDs off the unit roster uh, and give those to the scout. Uh, so the scout fills out the form header with, with the name and their member ID and then sends the form to the reference person and the reference should be the same person that for the same category that is on the application so you, on the application itself the scout will have to put a name and contact information for the references and those are the same people that you the scout should send the form to now who needs to be sent a reference form a parent uh, needs to fill out a form. Teachers uh, need to fill out a form. So uh, an educator uh, can be a teacher or a coach needs to fill out a form. If the uh, scout is homeschooled, the parent would fill out the form as an educator. There needs to be two other adult references. Uh, can be two neighbors or two other adults. Could be two people in the in the troop, uh, not the scoutmaster and not the committee chair. They're going to sign the application and their signatures are, are their reference. Uh, if the scout goes to church, then somebody at the church uh, should be sent a reference letter to fill out. Uh, and they should be, um, they, they would be the, the reference for the religious institution. If uh, the, the scout does not go to church, then one of the parents can fill be the reference for uh, religious reference, and they would fill out a letter uh, showing how the scout does their duty to God. If the scout is employed, then the employer would be another uh, reference letter. Again, the scout sends the form after filling out the header, sends the form to the reference, and then the scout is not involved anymore because the reference uh, would actually upload the reference letter to the portal. Any follow-up is done by the, the district uh, Eagle Board of Review. There is a a history report for the scout that can be gotten out of Internet Advancement or Scoutbook and scout, the Scouts BSA history report. Uh, that is uh, useful to the district and to the council 
so to get that, whoever does your uh, advancement tracking in Internet Advancement or Scalp Books, they should print out a history report. Uh, that uh, tells the district and the council uh, what is in the system, what is in the BSA system for the scout. Troop master reports or other third party reports cannot substitute for this because those uh, programs are not BSA databases. So it's not telling us anything about what's in the data BSA database, which is what we're after here. All right, so at this point, make sure that everything is uploaded to the portal and that the scout has a hard copy of everything in a one inch binder. So um, everything is up in the portal. Everything has been printed out and put in the one inch binder. That includes photographs. Photographs are uploaded to the portal and photographs are in the one inch binder. At that point, once they have everything uh, in the portal, then there is a button at the bottom of the screen on the portal that says I'm ready for final review. At that point, they, they press that button and it notifies council to start the review process. So uh, at that point, uh, they are done and they are waiting to be notified by the district of the scheduled board review. If they haven't heard back uh, within a month, uh, then they should reach out to their district uh, advancement chairman and find out uh, what's the delay. What will happen is once you've uploaded everything, uh, there is a button that you need to press that says to submit it for that you're done uploading and submit it for uh, review. Uh, make sure you do press that button. And then what will happen is council, uh, someone at council will look at the documents and check all of the dates that are on the application and make sure that uh, they match the dates that are in the system. That's why to downloading it from Scalpbook uh, is beneficial beneficial to you because they are the same dates. It's the same system, uh, so that's why you want to download your application from Scalpbook. But if you, in any case, they will double check and they'll make sure that everything looks good and that you're not going to have any problem processing the application through National. Once they have checked that, they then notify the district to uh, check the uh, project workbook and to check to make sure that what you said you were going to do is what you did and there's not going to be any issue at your Eagle Border Review. And then they will contact you uh, to let you know when your Eagle, Eagle Border Review is. If there are any uh, errors or any issues that we find along the way, we will reach out to you and let you know. If you have not heard anything within uh, three to four weeks, then uh, reach out to your district and find out what the holdup is. When the scout shows up to the Board of Review, they should be uh, in Class A uniform if they still have a uniform that fits. Uh, if they don't have a uniform that fits anymore, then they shouldn't go out and buy a uniform just for the Board of Review. Otherwise, what they do instead is they wear what they would wear to church. It's a formal occasion, so they should dress formally. Make sure that the Scout brings their binder to the Board of Review. Uh, the Boards of Review like to have something in front of them that they can point to. Uh, and so the hard copy binder uh, provides a very useful uh, tool for the, for the Board of Review to look at uh, the project, especially and other stuff that the, the Scout has in the binder. It's important to remember that a scout is not an Eagle Scout until National approves the application. So what happens after the Board of Review is that the district uh, Board of Review signs the application and submits it 
to council, who then submits it to national. So until the Eagle candidate hears back from national, usually the national sends them a certificate, uh, they're not an Eagle Scout and there should not be an Eagle Court of Honor and they won't be able to purchase uh, the Eagle rank insignia. So wait until National sends the certificate to the Scout before you schedule an Eagle Court of Honor. It could take up to six weeks before that happens. Talk a little bit about pre appeals. Eagle Boards of Review can only occur once. So if the Scout is for any reason rejected, uh, denied advancement Eagle Board of Review, then the recourse here is an appeal. Now the appeal, when, when a Scout is not passed, which is extremely rare uh, by the Board of Review, the Board of Review must in writing tell the Scout exactly why they did not pass the board. Um, then that, that information goes to the Scout, their Scout's parent and the unit. It's also sent to the council. The Scout has the right uh, if they feel that they have done the requirements, uh, they have the right to appeal the decision by the board. Uh, that appeal would initially go to the district. The district would set up a appeals uh, review board at the district level, and they would look specifically at the reason why the board of review rejected the advancement and then make a decision. Do they agree with the Board of Review or do they agree with the Scout that the Scout should be advanced? If they agree with the Scout, then they process the paperwork as normal. If they agree with the uh, Board of Review uh, on the denial, then that information is given to the Scout and the Scout then has the option to appeal to Council. Uh, again, council would put together a board of review, uh, not a board of review, but a, a re uh, appeals board to look at specifically why it was denied. We, the council won't look at the whole thing. We aren't going to do an entire board of review again. We're just going to look at the reason why it was denied, and we will get information from all the interested parties. Then we will make a decision one way or another we would make uh, we would give that recommendation to national. National would then uh, compile yet another appeals board and they would do the same exercise. They would look at what we said. They would probably reach out to the unit again uh, and to the scout again, and then they would make the final decision. So um, uh, that's that's how the appeals process works. In summary, we'd like to draw attention to these two points that are often overlooked. Yes, overlooked. Sometimes we get so wrapped up into the specifics of the project and maintaining some mythical set of standards that we forget the real scouting connections. The importance of the Eagle Scout service project does not lie in the end product. It's not so much about what got built, for example, it's about the journey, the experience. Eventually a bench or a table will rot and crumble. Eventually a bookcase will be replaced. Soon a bicycle safety rodeo will be forgotten, but that's okay. It's in the experiences, everything that happens, every decision, every aha moment, every night spent at the drawing board, every hour of work at the site, giving leadership and more that teaches the lessons we want. It's about sticking with something and seeing it through. It's about personal growth. It's about learning, learning a skill and applying it to something else that's important in life. It's about learning another skill that though it could be have been forgotten, serve to provide the experience and the confidence to do something else entirely different that perhaps the scout never thought they could do. 
And now a final important point. From time, perhaps more often than we like, we may encounter dedicated scouters who are unfamiliar with the guide to advancement and who continue to operate with outdated national policies and procedures. You may also find volunteers who are familiar with the guide to advancement, but who choose to ignore it. Then there are those who over the years who have come up with their own versions of the scouting program. Please understand that this presentation you've just been through has been created and approved through the National Advancement Committee. It is official. When you encounter people who question what you've learned today, help them find the correct and current processes in the Guide to Advancement. If they continue to question the national procedures we've been discussing, then you should take this up with your Council Advancement Committee, and if necessary, with your Scout Executive. After this has been done, if the issues persist, please let National know at advancementteam at scouting.org. And finally, here are your resources again. The best resource out there is our council website uh, for the EGLE process. And at the bottom of the screen, I have listed the email address of the Grand Canyon Advancement Committee. If you have particular questions, feel free to ask. We'd rather have you ask now uh, rather than assume something that may be incorrect and we run into issues when we're processing the final application. Thank you and thank you for listening.